Hello, my most amazing artists, and welcome back to art class. Uh, for your next project, for the next two weeks, we're going to be doing something that I have decided to call Kandinsky corn, and that's because we are going to combine two things. We are going to combine something called Indian corn, along with some of the works of an artist named Vasily Kandinsky. So let's talk a little bit about Indian corn first. So Indian corn um, is something that you're probably familiar with and you didn't even realize it. So if you've ever kind of walked around during um, fall and you've looked at like Thanksgiving decorations, Halloween decorations, and usually you see these ears of corn that look like corn on the cob, but they're all different colors. That is Indian corn. Um, it's a little bit harder than the corn that you would get in the summer, like corn on the cob that you would eat. You can eat Indian corn, but it is a little bit harder Usually it gets ground into uh, cornmeal, which can be used for different dishes like polenta, for example. Um, <clears throat> but a lot of people like to use Indian corn for decoration during the autumn season because it's so pretty. It can be in all different kinds of colors, even including things like red and blue, which is pretty cool. So we're using that as our inspiration. But as you can see by my corn here that I have on my um, board here, it is made out of all different types of tiny little circles. And that is inspired by a work of art by our artist, Vasily Kandinsky. Now, Kandinsky was a Russian painter. He was an artist who, when he was growing up, he, um, he really wanted to become an artist. But the thing was is that when he was growing up back in that time, because this was a long time ago, um, a lot of people didn't become artists. You know, his parents wanted him to go and become a lawyer. So, so he did. He went to law school, he became a lawyer, but he just wasn't happy. So he ended up leaving, you know, quitting being a lawyer and becoming an artist and doing what he loved. And he is one of the people who's given the credit for creating abstract art. Now think about that for a second. What is abstract art? Okay, I'll write it out on my mock report. I want you to think about it. So abstract art. Abstract art describes art that you look at and you can't quite say exactly what it is, right? You can't look at it and say, oh, it's a house, it's a person, it's a dog, it's a flower. Abstract art is the kind of art that makes you say, what is it? You know, like, like those paintings of just random circles, for example. Um, there's a piece of abstract art that was considered abstract art uh, that someone actually you know took a banana and like took a duct tape and duct taped it to a wall and it sold for like millions of dollars it's crazy but abstract art is the kind of art um, where it's not so much about what it looks like but it's more about expressing your feelings and that is what kandinsky used to do kandinsky used to paint paintings that could possibly even be put along with pieces of music that he enjoyed for example um, different instruments to him represented different colors, like a flute, like a little high-pitched instrument, like a flute or a piccolo. It was kind of like bright yellows to him or oranges, really bright colors. Um, were things like drums or um, a saxophone or a, uh, or a, um, a cello like really deep sounds could be more like a dark red or brown so to him colors represented different sounds as well and a lot of his artwork had different shapes colors all sorts of lines going all over the paper to express different um, pieces of music that were some of his favorites but one piece of artwork that he did that he's very famous for was something called his concentric circles i'm going to write that word on my board as well for you Con Concentric. Concentric circles, which basically means circles within circles, within circles, within circles, just like the ones that you see here. And he would use these concentric circles, and I'm going to post an example for you within the lesson so you can see an example of his work. He would also use these concentric circles to experiment with different types of colors and what they look like next to each other. I want you to think about in the past when we learned about the color wheel and complementary colors, for example. How red and green go together, purple and yellow go together, blue and orange go together, and they make each other look brighter. But red might not look as bright if you put it next to orange, for example, because it's so similar to orange. So he would use these concentric circles to just play around with different colors and see what they look like next to other colors. So we're gonna take these two things, the Indian corn with all its different color kernels, 
and Kandinsky's concentric circles, and we're going to combine them together into what I like to call Kandinsky corn. So I'm going to grab the materials that I need. You're going to need a piece of paper, a pencil to draw with, you're going to need scissors to cut out your corn shape, and then something to color your circles with. I am probably going to use crayon, but you could use crayons, markers, colored pencils. Uh, this one was done with oil pastel. If you have those, you know, you could try experimenting with those. If you have really thick paper and you want to paint, that's totally fine too. But I'm going to go with you step by step how to create the corn shape, how to set up your boxes, and how to do your concentric circles, and then the rest is all up to you. So let's get started. All right, so to start with my corn shape, I'm actually going to take my regular piece of paper and I'm going to fold it in half the long way. Now, usually when we fold paper in half, we fold it in half uh, the short way this way, but I'm actually going to fold it in half and create a long, skinny piece of paper that then I can make into my shape for my corn. So let me do that just to help me split my paper in half and then with my scissors, I'm going to cut that one half of the paper off. It doesn't have to be super neat because you're just going to end up cutting that other piece of paper anyway. All right, so you have a uh, tall, skinny piece of paper. I'm going to tape it to my board just so you guys can see what I'm doing with it. Okay, you don't need tape. This is just so you guys can see. But I'm going to take my big long piece of paper and then I'm going to draw the shape of a kernel of a giant corn cob on it. Usually it's a little bit bigger at the top, a little bit skinnier at the bottom, but not that much of a difference. And I'm going to really use the full size of my paper. Don't just take this and draw an itty bitty little corn cob in the middle. That's not going to work. You need to use the whole paper. You should barely have any scraps when you cut out the shape. So I'm going to make roundish corners like this and then just draw it coming all the way down. It's going to get a little bit skinnier at the bottom so it's going to come in a little bit. Right. Take this so you guys can see what I did there. So I took my pencil and I drew in my corn cob shape. Now I'm going to cut it out. All right, so just kind of a rounded piece that's a little bit smaller at the bottom, a little bit wider at the top. So that is my corn cob shape. And I'm going to just split it into different sections. Now I did a lot of sections on this piece right here. Um, you don't have to do as many here. You can make them bigger, but you don't want them to be too tiny because since you're doing circles within circles, you want it a firm that you can actually see the different colors. So I'm just going to take my pencil and just kind of divide my corn up into different sections. I'm actually going to do this with a marker so you guys can see it. So it just looks like giant corn kernels. And then here comes the fun part. There are no rules to this. You can literally use any colors you want. I'm just going to grab a couple of random colors out of my crayon box and you're going to have some fun making some circles. All right, always start with the circle in the middle first out. I'm going to do this one right here just so you guys can see it and I'm going to just do a little bit of yellow, jump to a different color. Okay, it can be a little bit scribbly, it doesn't have to be super neat. And as you can see, when I am restricted by the space because I've hit the sides there, you don't keep going around in the circle. You kind of just pretend that you're staying within that space there. And then I've only got a little bit of space left, so I'm just going to do in the rest. All right. And I can move on from there and I can pick different colors and fill in all my spaces with different combinations. Maybe I might move around from space to space if I want to start with orange in one, maybe do 
purple around this one here, but then jump and do a purple dot in there in that one. So like while you're holding on to different colors, you can jump in between different things and kind of start just, you know, going in between box and box and box and seeing what you can add to your collection. And you're gonna do that until you fill up your entire piece, just like you filled up this one. Then after that, the only extra thing to add to your Kandinsky corn are the husks at the very, very top of the corn. And that you can do with your extra piece of paper. Or if you happen to have any brown construction paper at your house, you can just cut strips out of that and you wanna glue it to the back. You don't wanna glue it to the front because you don't wanna glue on top of your concentric circles. You can glue it to the back. Or if you don't have brown construction paper, you can take brown paint or a brown crayon and simply, you know, color a piece of paper brown, take your scissors, and cut out strips that can be glued at the top. But you want to make them crinkly so after you cut them, you want to kind of give them a little squeeze, make them a little crinkly, and then glue those onto the back of your Kandinsky corn. So you can create those out of the other half of the paper um, from where you cut out your corn shape. So it's pretty simple. Uh, make your corn shape. Uh, grid out some kernels for you to color in and then take some inspiration from Kandinsky's concentric circles to color in your corn kernels and you're going to color in the whole thing so it looks somewhat similar to this one and you can do as many or as few corn kernels as you like. Um, this would probably be the least that I would do I would just do like three across. All right, and remember when you're done to take a picture of your artwork and send it to me so I can give you a grade and I can't wait to see how your Kandinsky corn comes out. And I will see you guys again next time for our class. See ya.